Hey everybody, Goro here. So in my last video, I alluded to one of the dangers of Nepal as being there when a natural disaster such as an earthquake hits. And given the recent news of the 6.1 magnitude earthquake that struck Jajarkot, I thought it would be prudent to talk about Nepal's relationship with earthquakes and just why they're so deadly in the country. So the first reason that earthquakes are so deadly in Nepal is because of Nepal's geographic location. So if we look at a map of tectonic plates, we can see that Nepal sits right on the edge of the Eurasian and the Indian plate. In fact, the meeting of these two plates is the entire reason that the Himalayas exist. The Himalayas, if we look at them, how they run up between China and India, it's a good marker of, although not exact, where that, uh, those plates meet each other. So anytime those plates move or shift, those areas are going to get hit with earthquakes. And the most densely populated area along that line happens to be Nepal. So whenever an earthquake hits Nepal, it's going to be because of those two plates shifting and it's going to cause devastation because of that geographic location. The second reason why earthquakes in Nepal are so deadly is because of the lack of infrastructure to deal with them. Nepal is a very poor country most of the buildings are made out of concrete, brick, uh, with a wood frame. And there really is no infrastructure to be able to handle earthquakes, and especially earthquakes of the magnitude that Nepal typically gets. So for example, we think back to 2015, the most recent deadly earthquake in Nepal's history was a 7.8 magnitude earthquake. That is huge. And it devastated a lot of Nepal. Not just the area where it hit, as was the case with Jajarkot and the one that happened just a couple days ago, but it hit just outside Kathmandu. And Kathmandu does not have the infrastructure in its buildings to deal with earthquakes, especially of that magnitude. The third reason that earthquakes in Nepal are so deadly is because of the population density. So thinking back once again to the 2015 earthquake, that earthquake was so devastating once again because it was near Kathmandu. Now Kathmandu has somewhere in the range of probably two and five million people living within the bounds of the city and the surrounding valley. Not only was it a big earthquake, but it hit a super vulnerable place. Kathmandu, huge population, no infrastructure, and it killed over 8,000 people. That earthquake was also devastating for other reasons. It was so close to the mountains, caused avalanches and landslides in the hills and in the mountains. And one of the areas most affected by this that you can still see today is the Lam Tong area. The Lam Tong trekking valley is still not recovered uh, from that 2015 earthquake. There are entire swaths of that valley that you can go to now even and still see where those landslides came down and buried entire villages. That 2015 earthquake was absolutely catastrophic in so many ways to Nepal as a country. So those are why earthquakes are deadly. So what about this earthquake that's happened in the West? Well, the epicenter of the earthquake was in an area called Jajarkot, which like I said is west of Kathmandu. It's west of a lot of things. It's very close to the Indian border on Nepal's western side. 
it's in the hills and the earthquake was about I believe it was around a 6.1 estimates are now that about hundred and fifty people are dead although I'm sure that number will increase as rescue efforts get underway it sounds like around 600 people so far are injured so although the 2015 earthquake and the 2023 earthquake are different in magnitude and lives lost the 2023 earthquake is devastating in its own way the reason that this earthquake is so deadly is because of where it struck so the western part of nepal is not as well connected to the rest of the country as the center and especially the east the west though is highly underdeveloped and so this earthquake taking place in Jajarkot in the hilly region the reason why it's so devastating is because it's going to be incredibly difficult to get supplies and help into the areas that need it most in the coming days we'll know more about just exactly how much devastation has hit Jajarkot until then, we hope for and wish for the best in the rescue efforts for the people that live there and in the surrounding affected areas. I hope this video gave a little bit more insight into earthquakes and Nepal's relationship with them and exactly why they're so deadly in Nepal. That it's not just one reason, but it's really several factors that come together and create this perfect storm. Uh, that make earthquakes in Nepal difficult to combat. Anyway, that's going to be it for me. I'll see you in the next one.